It's called hip hop, but a lot of people believe it's a movement. Okay. And be advised, this is not for children. Explicit content. Now we've got in the building a founder, CEO, block boy, Marco from Peru. We've got King Up Rock from Donuts and Rockers. And we've got a founding member, AC Ace from Donuts and Rockers. Salute dynamic, dynamic. Dynamic. So just um, just tell us how you first started off with the crew. Okay. All right. How you doing? What my, name? my name is ACA from Dynamic Rockers. I started Dynamic Rockers oh. in the uh, early yes. 77. Uh, er, uh, late okay. 77, early oh, 78. Okay. We started Dynamic Rockers in a club called One of a Kind. There was uh, there was five of us, five dancers that that ran around. Uh, battle and different guys all over New York, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan. You know. Wow. Yeah, it was it was it was a great experience because when you're young, and living in in New York, it was like there was a bandit buildings and gangs. You know, and uh, there was a lot of gangs in that time. And uh, so we when we started going to a teen club, you know. Uh, we started dancing. Uh, we got picked to make uh, dancer books and stuff like that. And um, we didn't want to join a gang. So we started uh, uh, um, the crew to dance against other guys from different neighborhoods. Instead of fighting, we wanted to dance. So that's how it all started. You know, it started because we didn't want to get involved with the, with the wrong people, you know. And it kept us out of trouble. I got a question. Yeah. What were those crews that you were battling? Can you name them? At uh, the time? Okay. Now, back in the day, I, they don't even, some of these crews don't even exist no more. There was Seven Stars. There was the uh, Cocaine City Boys, that's CC Boys in Corona. Uh, there, were, there were HBO Boys in, in Brooklyn. There was um, a crew in, in Corny Allen. Um, there was like... Uh, um, let me think. Uh, New York City Breakers, that was at uh, USA, the skating ring. You know, there was a lot of crews that are not um, that are not uh, known, you know, because uh, we smoked them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, um, my question is, Yeah. what was your first experience with hip hop and who were your influences growing up? Wow, there's so many of them. You know, it's like, okay. Well, I went, how, how was your childhood? Explain this to us like in a movie. How in a movie? You, how a, you a, night, a nightmare. A, uh, I came from a, a very uh, abusive family, and that's why I turned to dancing. I First, it was gymnastics at school because I was really good in gymnastics. You know, I would I did the Apollo bars, the rings, and everything. But uh, when I came home from school, I always end up uh, getting my getting hurt by my stepfather. You know, so it was abusive. So when uh, when I was twelve and thirteen years old, instead of going home, I would go outside and and, and go to the Bronx, Brooklyn, and and see guys dancing. You know, and battling each other, and that's what we did. You know, at an early age, I was running uh, to the Bronx, to Queens, to Brooklyn, all parts of the neighborhoods where other dancers will, will be at. And that's that's how I escaped um, the feelings I felt of uh, being hurt, you know? So dancing saved my life. Wow. That's good to know. So when was the first time you even witnessed or seen break dancing? And I got another question. In this whole time in this in this era that you were doing what you were doing, did you see anybody up rocking or anything like that? Did you see that yes. culture out yet? 
You yes, did. There was, yes, there were up rocks and there were floor uh, floor masters. We we used to call them floor dance, you know, back in those days. Um, there were up rockers. There were there. See, um, breaking was it's so much more than just getting down on the floor because there were so many different kinds of dances going on. You know, I mean, we had people that hustle. We had people that up rock. We had people that down rock. Um, popping, you know, all these dances that exist today started off mm-hmm. in in the early 77, 78. Okay. And what was your first experience? Okay, my first experience is, is when we were at one of a kind. Now, this is this is the neighborhood club. It's a teen disco, all right? And uh, so we're, we're, we're at the club and, and you know, we got our guys at the club, and then some guys from Manhattan came, okay? And let me tell you something. That was the first time we got served. You know, it's like we didn't know anything about breaking at that time. But these guys came into the club and started doing some floor work, all right? I could name the three guys that came. It was Alan from the Manhattan Boys. Um, Crash from the Manhattan Boys and Bingo from the Manhattan Boys. And they came to the club and they started doing this footwork stuff. And it, and me and my boy, uh, Eddie Ed, my brother Dennis, uh, Nelly Nell, and um, CR. You know, these are the guys that, that were in my crew. And um, we didn't know too much about the dancing because we were young at that time. You know, we, we're just mm-hmm. learning. And uh, they served us, and they, let me tell you something. We knew we had to get better. We, we knew we can't let these guys come to our club and take our woman, you know, because uh, that's, that's the way it was, you know. It's like yeah. these guys came and started it started rapping to our girls and everything, and, and they the girls liked them because the way they danced, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So thank God that some, some of us, you know, we are – we did gymnastics in, gymnastics in school, so most of the guys, like um, my brother Dennis, Eddie Ed, Nelly Nell, um, there was a couple other guys, um, C.R., Shetty, you know, all these guys that, that were part of Dynamic, but they're not around no more, you know? So these, mm-hmm. are, the found, these are some of the guys that paid the way for Dynamic Rockets that they exist, you know? I mean, this is the beginning of Dynamic Rockers. Oh, okay. And um, what did it? What did that? What did that crew? Your crew evolved into? Oh my God! You said that was the beginning. So what happened after? What happened next? Well, well, what happened was is that um, we started getting older, you know, and um, when we, I, I, a lot of times when we went to clubs at in in, in New York, they didn't want us break dancing. They thought we were fighting, you know. So there was a lot of, you know, people that didn't want breakdancing to to, uh, to get recognized. Do you remember who was spinning, who was DJing at the time? What were the DJs that were out? Yeah, African Bambada. He was. Well, uh, he didn't want you in the clubs. Yeah, African Bambada was DJing at the Roxy's, and, oh. and it's called Ten Eighteen. And then, oh, you, okay. then you got Jelly Bean Benitez that from the Fun House. Then you got Bonds International. Then you got um um what's it what's the other club um Gotham's West you know these are all clubs that that were back in my days like Danceteria you know the Wave these all these clubs that we that uh that we danced at you know I mean it was uh it was a great experience being brought up in New York City. Mm-hmm. Okay, how do you know Ralphie? Okay, I met I met, I, I met King Up Rock at USA. There was a battle there one day, and um, this is the first time that I seen um, somebody up rock, you know, like really good, you know, and um, and I seen him on the dance floor. Now USA is a skating ring, so they had people skating all around, and then they had in the center they had a um, carpet area and a dance floor. And I remember that uh, that Kid Freeze was um, Kid Freeze was there dancing, and and there was a battle there that night, and and I seen and I met 
Ralph uh, that day because I seen how he danced. And I, I, I admire people's dancing. Let me tell you something. It was not mm -hmm. all about hating on people. It was learning about their skills and how they did it and what, what, how I can I make it a better dance. You understand? Yeah. Because we, I'm sorry to say we bit off a lot of people, but we came up with our own dance. And that's why, you know, uh, most of the dynamic rock, uh, rocking guys um, were into gymnastics. So we were able to make the moves that we did, you know? Yeah. What year was that? You remember? Um, early er, um, late 77, early 78. Wow. But there's, a, there's something I, I didn't tell you in the beginning because it was like, okay, in the beginning at the, at the club called One of a Kind, we had, we had a different name. We were called uh, uh, ecstasy dancers, okay? Exotic dancers, I'm sorry. And uh, one day that, that uh, we were dancing in the club, you know, and uh, we made our jackets and everything, and it said exotic dancers. And uh, I stopped by a newspaper stand, and they had, like, you know, back in the days, they had these boxes that they sell newspaper, magazines, and everything. And I seen a magazine, and it was, a, it was like a gay magazine. And I turned, you know, I'm not gay, but I turned the magazine, the, the paper over, and I seen that it said exotic dancers, and it was a bunch of guys. Mm -hmm. And that day, we took our jackets off, and we never wore them again, you know? Yeah. And, that, and then we changed the name. Now, how did I get the name? Um, it's a funny story how I got the name. You guys remember Batman and Robin, right? Of course. Okay, Batman and Robin, they had a series where the Joker, Catwoman, and and um, the Riddler, they're all together in one show that year. The Penguin, yeah. The Penguin, yeah. Now, if you, if you watch that movie, you're going to see that Batman, they mentioned dynamic duels yeah 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 and that's, that's how i got the name oh you got the name from dynamic duels watching that seeing that on the absolutely yes, absolutely and that day that i heard that was the day that i went over to eddie ed's house and we sat in his room and drew uh dynamic and how we could how we designed the shirts now if you look at my shirt here that's one of the original Dynamic Rocker shirts. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay. Nice. Look at that. That's beautiful. The Playboy Bunny in the front. That's, that's correct. That's correct. See, and we made them. We made, I think, I sent King Up Rock some pictures of uh, the magazine. Yeah, that's nice. Made, you know, and, and um, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of people don't want to recognize the beginning of dynamic, you know, um, a lot of the, the dynamic rockers that were back in the day are not around today, but we still have to give them respect, you know, and the era that that I came from was left out. And there's a story that goes along that. And I don't like to the, the, um, talk about other people and other people drama, you know, you understand? Because when when I left Dynamic, I moved to Bayside, and I left the I left Dynamic with uh, my friend Eddie Ed, and um, I didn't find out till years later that he wasn't representing the crew. You know, he didn't set any anything up, any dances for the crew. He gave the name away, and I didn't find this out till like thirty years later. You know. And why I was still going out to clubs dancing, but I wasn't wearing no colors, you know? I wasn't wearing my dy dynamic rock shirt, but I danced in all the clubs, you know? And uh, so did my brother, and uh, so did Nelly Nell. I met most, I seen all the guys I used to dance with in clubs, you know? Dancing in different in different clubs. Like I, met, I seen Victor Gotham's West, that's Glide. I seen him in, in Gotham's West with his brother. You know, George. Um, and I give much respect to Glide because he carried he carried the, 
dynamic rocket name to another different level, just like his son. So I, I you know, I, I respect what they did, but you, you know, you have to bring it back to the found the founders of dynamic rockers and what they represented in that time, you know, because, you know, I, when I break dance, when we break dance, it wasn't all about shaking hands at that time. Is that sometimes you end up getting your ass kicked, you know? And sometimes you had to run out of clubs. I remember jumping out of a window, out of a club in, uh, in Brooklyn called Studio 54. And we had to jump out of the window because we had a battle there. And it, it, they didn't want the real, you know, we smoked them. And they were mad. So, you know, back in those days, it, you know, you step on somebody's sneakers, you had, you had a problem. You know what I'm saying? So these are the things that in the early, in the early times... You know, you when you dance and you hit somebody, you know, nine out of ten times you're gonna have a fight. You know, and me, I, I I'm a white guy, so I had a lot of a lot of fights in my days. You know. Okay, David, you got a question? Not really, brother. You want to ask him a question? Somebody just called me and took me off the mic, so let me come right back, okay? I'm going to get off and yeah. come right back. Yeah. What was um, what was the most dangerous times that you had as an up rocker growing up? Who, King? King I ICA. No, you. It's a B-boy. He was a beat more of a B-boy. Yeah. Well, I did, I did a, a bunch of things. I started off at... at uh, as a b-boy then like um like i i had some moves but i didn't i wasn't as good as my brother as good as eddie ed you know so i so we decided that because there were so many different things that that um happened at a battle there was guys that did hustling there was guys that up rock there was guys that um uh floor floor controls you know it's like so, so everybody had their little thing that we did, and that's how, um, that's how it all started. You know, it's like when we went to a club. If the if there was a a, a dancer that dance uh, that hustled, I would hustle against them to show that we're better. You know, it was all about seeing who was best at that time. You know, competition wise. Okay. Now I want to say I just want to say something because I want to clarify it says we have ace on the line when i went to usa i didn't go to battle dynamic so what happened was somebody in my neighborhood told me yo you know the skating ring in usa i said yeah i heard of it they told me yo they be dancing there you need to go there and show your stuff i'm like yeah all right so i took this girl from dynasty named Jeanette, and we went to usa and when i saw the guys breaking i was like wow what is this i said they don't do what we do mm -hmm. so I think it was just begun they put on or something. I told right. Jeanette, Jeanette, just get down. You're not looking to battle. Just get down. We're going to get down just to show them our style. We wound up getting down. We started doing things. And I remember Ace, and I think it was Nelly Nell came up to me and said, yo, where are you guys from? I'm from Bushwick. Mm -hmm. You know, and they saw the shirt, Dynasty Rock. It's like, oh, sweat. We first, we thought it was Dynamic. I said, no, I'm Dynasty. Mm -hmm. And remember. that's when Ace asked me, yo, we would love to learn your style. Would you mind helping us? And we'll, help, we sh we'll show you some of our style. Mm -hmm. They were my inspiration the first time I ever saw Breaking. And that's wow. how I got into the Breaking. Then me and Kid Freeze, we became the greatest friends. And Kid Freeze was my power move instructor. He taught me power moves. You know? Wow. But it was good because... You know, Ace one time lived in Bushwick, and he's seen it around. So it's kind of they remember the name Dynasty because Dynasty and Touch Rock is like the two big biggest name. Yeah. But you know, we had over hundred rock crews, but it was so great that me and Ace became so much of a good friends. And um, I was I had the opportunity to first learn how to do my footwork and freezes from them, and then later on I moved on meeting. Um, the floor masters in the Bronx and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I got to learn more and more from different people. But 
when I remember they used to want to have practice and I, and I mean, I was kind of, I was in my teens. It was hard for me because I was playing baseball and I was doing martial arts and boxing. So a lot of times in the weekend, it was hard for me, but the only time I used to really go when they had the story of pool, because that's where they had a lot of time people were even yeah. breaking the pool. Yep. <laughs> So you're you talking know, more or less 77, right there, right 78? There. You're talking huh? more or less 77, 78, that time, yeah. that era? Yeah, 79, 80, yeah. yeah. So Rocksteady wasn't out yet? I mean, you guys didn't hear Rocksteady at any Brown schools or anything like that yet? No, we heard, you heard of Yeah, we, there was a, we heard about Rocksteady. We heard about cra uh, Crazy Legs, Brownie. Um, uh -huh. I remember that uh, Eddie Ed, and um, that he had went to, um, to Lincoln Center, all right, and uh, he didn't tell the rest of the crew, but he went there, and that was his first meeting with Rocksteady, from my understanding. But then there was a couple more other other battles that I wasn't aware of. That um, that's when uh, Glide was uh, battling um, Rocksteady. Rocksteady went to all the clubs. They went to Rocksteady hung out more at the Roxy's in 1018 because African Bambada was so much part of Rocksteady. If you if you oh. if you really know your history, um Crazy Legs and 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 uh and African Bambada were tight, you know? Any any crew that came from Manhattan, like the Rocksteady crew, they had backup from everybody from Manhattan. You know, it's like different guys from different areas have their own people watching their back. Like we had we had a gang in New York called the Crazy uh, Crazy Homicides. So they will watch our back when we danced and battled in different places too. You know what I'm saying? So it was mm -hmm. all, it, it, that's the way it was back in those days. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at the history of Rocksteady, Rocksteady's been a downward Zulu nation and African Bambada most of the, all, all the time, you know? So that's how we met yeah. Rocksteady. What would you say? was your hardest and greatest battle. What crew would you say? Or should I say, what were the top five? Well, in my era, in my era, it yeah, was the Manhattan. In your era, in, my, in your era. In my era, it was the Manhattan Boys. Because um, when they first came to the club, um, that was our, our, our awakening that we had to do work. We had to get better. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. There was other battles that we had in Corny Island, um, and we did we did the best we did the best we can. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't all about uh, it wasn't all about the recognize uh, being better. It was just being where you learn more. You know? Yeah. Representing, you know, going down. Yeah. Yes. It didn't, and what's great about that is that you got to remember. You know, it's like. A lot of these kids came from from the streets, you know. A lot, of, at least, the dancing, uh, breaking that was a street, a, a street thing. You know what I'm saying? Now it's right, ghetto, you know. And and yeah. that that and there was ghettos in every neighborhood in in New York. You know, different crews. Yeah, it was they an had escape to, basically. It was an escape. Yeah. yeah, they had Queensbridge had some had some breakers. Um, I forgot most of their names, but I'm sure Ralph knows uh, a lot of the breakers from New York, from Queens, Queens Bridge. Um, and there were breakers all over, you know. Like I said, you know, Cocaine City Boys in, in, in Corona, Seven Stars. I mean, these are crews that, that, that we danced against that are no longer around, you know. Much respect to all of them. So that's basically Queen's history, right? Yeah. Queen's history. Went every wow. And would you say what negative what what was negative that you didn't like about the scene? About it? Yeah. What didn't you like about it? I can't say I didn't like it. I like I loved it. I mean I can't say that anything negative about it is that, you know, um well, for, so one thing that I think was negative about it is that um, 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 a lot of guys had crews, right? And mm -hmm. um, they will take, they will go to different crews and get other guys to dance for them and be represented by their crew. And when when you do something like that, 
that's, that's cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> yes, that's cheating. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention the crew that did it, but it 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 was a popular crew, and and uh, and that's what they did. You know, uh, they picked guys from different crews to come in and dance that day, to the to, to try to win. Represent their name and go yeah. against the ones who they were battle the challenge. Absolutely. Yeah, that's cheating. It had to be original members against original members. Yes. No one outside the box, and that don't that don't fly. And Dynamic Rock has never done that. Never. Rocky, what do you got to say about that? Yeah, I know who he's talking about. And um, I mean, in, in Bushwick, we never do that. It's a, we know everybody. I mean, we know everybody. So if you put Touch of Rock, we know all the members of Touch of Rock. And all right. the members of Touch of Rock know Dynasty. So anytime we battle, especially we battle for colors, for shirts and stuff like that, or name of the crew, Mm -hmm. We already knew we were battling, so they, you know, we could tell if they tried to cheat, but we didn't care because we were so good, nobody could, nobody could touch us, bro. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question: When you guys were smallies, when you guys were shorts, yeah. you know, did you see anybody break dancing? Well, well Bushwick, I don't know. Bush in Bushwick, there was nobody breaking. I bought Bush. I bought breaking to Bushwick because I learned. I saw dynamic. I saw like Ace Nelly Nell. Bebop, all these guys, you know, Kid Freeze, you know, um, no, when you're saying guys. Brooklyn, when you're saying Bushwick, you're not claiming Greenpoint, you're not no, claiming Park I'm just Slope, talking about Bushwick, Red Hook, you're just saying no. Bushwick. Bushwick. Yeah. Nobody okay. was breaking. I, when I got down breaking that I was learning from them, they thought I was on some type of big drug, but it's never seen nobody <laughs> try to spit on the head and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, they, they, they never really seen it until they saw flash dance. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you in Connecticut, we didn't see that break dance into to uh the Buffalo Gals video, bro. Yeah, that's what did it well, for us. That Buffalo Gal video <clears throat> that set it off for us in Connecticut. Hartford. I'm talking about Hartford. Now you Hartford. see that the Buffalo the Buffalo Gals video, right? They're trying to say that it was Normski. But there's a kid that used to be in my crew that I used to, you know, he used to pop. His name was Mr. Magic, you know. He's the one who did that video with the little kid with the big hat. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the, with the, yeah. the sheriff hat. No, not yeah. the sheriff. Yeah, that hat. Yeah. Yeah. He was from my crew. But but remember, when I, when I, when I was practicing with the dynamic that I learned, and I couldn't go back because... It was so far for me to practice with them and everything. That's when Viejo, the founder of the Mastermind Rockers from Queens, he put me in the crew, and then I started breaking with them. And then I made a chapter in Bushwick Mastermind Rockers. I think in that, in if, I, if I'm correct, at the end of that song, they give a shout out to Brooklyn Crews Up Rockers, bro. Am yeah. I right or wrong? I, I I think they do, but um, because I think they mentioned Touch of Rock too, also in that. End. So they weren't talking about break dancers; they were talking about rock, rock dancers, right? Yeah, rock there, yeah, because you know, rocking was before breaking. Yeah. So, how do you feel about the concept that's going on today? This discussion, the back and forth, you know, disagreement. They're trying to say that the rock dance had nothing to do with break dance. Would you agree or disagree? I'm going to tell you great. the information I've got from a lot of heads and my research, that's got to be a lie because some rock dancers gave that up and became break dancers. So how yeah, could that not be the same thing? Well, let me tell you something. If you can't up rock the, 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 before you go that, before you hit that floor, you're going to look a little silly just jumping on the floor and start, start dancing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you have to you have to show your your moves even before you go down. You know, I mean, up rocking, up rocking came to a point where it was straight up rock. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's all they did. But back in the early times, is that when you when before you went on the floor, you did some moves where you you grab the guy's head and you, you throw it in the air and then you spin a burn, down. yeah, a clown you a know, burn. Like there was moves that that you did, you know. Uh, on the dance floor that is considered uh, rocking, but it was still on the ground. You understand me? Yeah, I disagree with that. I believe that rock dance is the foundation of people, of break dancing, bro. Because yeah. 
That was the dance that the cats in the streets did first. Yes. That, that became B-Boys. Yep. Yep. That rocked the fresh gear. That spoke the swag. That was kicking it with the feet. You know what I mean? Yes. That was out of them clubs doing damage, whether it was hustle, whether yes. it was funk, whatever have you. That rock dance was foundation. That's the way I see it. Absolutely. You feel me? The only reason, the only reason I think a lot of the guys, the young, young kids, didn't get into the rocking that much and they wanted to move away. And that's when they, they found that, that they could hit just hit the floor, is because gangs were doing it and they were afraid to battle gangs members, you know? Yeah. That was the same thing, Half Connecticut. The gangs, the savage nomads were doing that, and they were, they didn't want no B boys, none of that doing that dance, bro. So yeah, since, since, the gangs never, since the gangs never did footwork and backspins and headspins, they said, well, we're going to go stay here because we ain't going to that direction and stand up there and try to burn against them. Then they're going to wind up. Because most fights, most dance wind up in fights, like 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 yeah. you said. Especially if you went to another hood, yo, you yeah. were getting chased, bro. You were going to get yeah. chased. You're taking their girls. You yeah. was like the star. You came up there and rocked their contest. They, yeah. they wasn't having that. Yeah. And if you were hanging out with outlaws, you had to be a peewee. You had to be a part of them because they were not going to take the responsibility for a minor, bro. Yeah. You got a lot of cats saying they were with outlaws and all this and that. It's impossible, bro. Nah. Who, who, who wanted a, a peewee around them and shit? You know, unless you had them her yeah. holding the burn or he was doing dirt, you know, didn't have yeah. a mother and a father. You raised them, you know. So there's a lot of controversy going on with it. As far as age is concerned, you know what I mean? Like, I believe, you know, I really honestly believe that you can actually give an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old credit for dancing if he was in the street. Because your history begins in the street, not in your crib practicing. Not yeah. in your basement practicing on the mirror. Not yeah. on the fire escape watching cats go at it. No, your, your credibility is when you get out in that street and the people see you get down. Yeah, That's the yeah. beginning of your history, whether it's eight years old. Nine years old, 10 years old, 11, 12, 13. Mostly everybody's like 13, 14, 12, because that's when, when you hit that teenage, that's when you win an experiment. Well, some get faster than others. I remember, so, I remember we used to go to Park Avenue on 58th Street and put down cardboard and mm -hmm. Nelly Nell, uh, Bebop, Ray Hound. We used to dance on that pop, uh, on that cardboard, make money to go out to the clubs. <laughs> yeah, serious. That far back with the money making and out of break dancing. Yeah, we used wow. to get money. It was incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so what what was your most spectacular battle? I mean, the the biggest battle that you experienced as a break dancer. What was the biggest battle with your crew? Well, back in my days, you got to remember. Um, that was the beginning of a lot of crews too. You know what I'm saying? So um, um, I would say the battle that, that was going on in USA, that was at my era, one of the, one of the um, prime battles, you know? But then there was other places that we went to like Corny Island and we battled in Corny Island and, and each one was, each one was, was great. You know, each battle that we went to, we we had fun. Who, I mean, who was DJing in your in your set at the at the Rolling Ring? Who was DJing? You remember? Oh man, oh, I couldn't even tell you. But he, there were there were some good DJs in, in you know. Yeah. You got to remember, even the DJs back in those days, man, they know how to cut things up. You Would know? you say there were a lot of Latino DJs in that time? A lot of Boricuas killing the wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, they they had Dance of the Drummer's Beat, Sex Machine. They had uh, so many good songs that they could cut up, man. I remember going to a um, a battle in Bushwick, and LL performed at that at that. Uh, okay, party. now you're talking more towards yep. the eight. Okay. Yeah, LL Cool J. He went there, and 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 um, he got his chain stolen. At that, at that jam, you know. So this, I think I heard about that, but I heard that on the broadcast already. Yeah, I heard yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's how far. You, see, I was a, a a small white boy, and I went to every place. I didn't care. It, you know, it didn't matter that I was white. You know what I'm saying? You I were was, out there. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yo, let me tell you something. Nobody could say that about me, bro. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't fear nothing at my time. You know what I'm saying? Because I came from a, a really bad family. That 
hey, if I didn't get killed by my stepfather, the street ain't going to kill me. The street welcomed me more. Check that out. They welcomed what, what, me more. What are you, I'm Italian? Italian? You Italian? I'm, t I'm t Italian, yes. yes. Okay. But okay. let me tell you something. All my boys that, that I that I ran with, like Glide, Glide let me sleep at his house. You know? Um, there was guys that I lived in Bayside, and they would tell me, yo, Ace, come and stay with us. You know what I'm saying? And I, I went to their families, and they were like, who's this white boy in our house? You know what I'm saying? But You're talking about Glide from Dynamic, right? Yeah, Glide Glide and his brother. Man. That second generation, though. Is that second generation? Yes. That, that's that's second a second generation. generation of Dynamic, right? Yep, yep. They used to let me stay at their house because I lived in 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 in, Bay, in Bayside. So these are the, these are all the beginning of 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 all the history of dynamic rockers. You know, it's incredible. The word that I got, the word that I got, you know, was that the when it came to that break dancing and the power moves, that was all Queens, man. That was all that side, bro. That's that's what they said they were really getting it. The helicopter and all that. That's where all that came from. But more yeah. of the down rock, that was Bronx. Yeah. That's yeah. that's how they, they got it, you know. What do you do you agree with that, Ralphie, in your experience? Because you were out there from what the uh, pictures you show me, the flyers you have. It's incredible what you have, and it isn't even really out there yet. It's incredible. Well, we could do a series on ten. 10, 10, 10, uh, 10 cap, what do you call it? 10 shows on you, bro. We won't be done with you. Bro. You have so much yeah. stuff to do better. Yeah, like in Queens, they had Nice and Nasty. Mm -hmm. They had a whole bunch of crews out there. And they were, you know, rocking. But then the when they got it, some guys were just breaking. Like I said, um, to me, when I went to, when I went, my, me and my boy Kick, my boy Kick knew Fast Break very well. And when we went to the Bronx, that's how I met Fast Break. And I met, you know, um, flex in them, and that's the name nobody mentions. Fast break, and, wow. and you know, fast breaking them was mad cool. And I saw, and I was like, oh, well, this is the thing the queens are doing. Mm -hmm. But you know, I had to say, Bronx maybe flavor floor flavor was better. You know, the footwork was much, much faster, mm -hmm. quicker. Um, queens, I mean, unless wavy legs, wavy legs, Edison, he was phenomenal with footwork. Yep, yep, phenomenal. Yep. Wow. I gotta give him. The most, he was my favorite. I mean, we was me, Richie Rock, Pablo, all of us. We would sit there and watch him. Like, how is he doing all this thing? And that's he, that's how we learned by watching. Richie Rock in Puerto Rico. Yeah, that's he talking and, about. Um, and Mighty Whitey and Awesome Paul. I, I mean, all, um, Odyssey and all of us. And then um, there was a lot of time I went to Queens parties in um, in Jamaica because after I lost touch with the Storia guys. Uh, my boy Navida, his name is Felix Cortez. His cousin, who Eddie Eddie 007, I taught how to DJ, and he's like, "Yo, my I have a my cousin does all that break dancing thing," and I'm like, "Well, who's your cousin?" He said, "Oh, his name is Navida. He practices with Dynamic." I said, "Dynamic? What do you mean Dynamic?" So I went to Queens, and when I met Gly and I saw Spider and Airborne and Kano and flipping these guys, I was like, "Wait a minute, none of these guys are the." Nah, it's not the dynamic I know. I know Nelly Nell, I know Ace, I know Dennis, I know, where's all the rest of them? Oh, that's the story of chapter. I said, yeah, but I thought it was the same chapter. That's when I found out there was a second chapter was Jamaica. And then I got close with Spider and Richie Rock and those guys. And that's how I got around to hang out with Dynamic for the second time with the Jamaica. But the first time I was, Ace put me down with, Dyn with Dynamic in the story of chapter. Yep. But then when I couldn't go, I wind up meeting Mastermind and I got down with Mastermind. And then they gave me my own chapter. I wasn't trying to dis, you know, uh, ace them because, you know, I guess a lot of them disappeared and, and time went by so fast, I didn't get to know, you know, where they was at, you know? Yeah, I couldn't remember the building, you know? That's when you were called Mr. Nice, right? Yeah, I was called Mr. Nice as a beat. I was breaking, I was break dance, breaking. I was called Mr. Nice. That was my breaking name. Okay. And they were they we uh Dynamic had uh two chapters in, in Queens, the the Marine Terrace chapter and then the early sixth avenue chapter. And then um Glide ended up uh having a chapter in um in Jamaica. So that's how it 
that's how it was, you know? And the guys from the 36th Avenue chapter went with Glide. What did you guys battle for? Money, girls, <laughs> the shirts, the colors, what? No, Trophy? Did, yo, just the way the battle, street, man. It was the street thing that went down. It, there was no money involved. Yo, there, right? Let me tell you something. It was the feeling you got when you won, that feeling is priceless. Yes. There's no trophy. There's no yes. coin. There's nothing that you could put yeah, yeah. That's on, the on you that won't tell yes. you. That. That's, I'm sorry. It goes further than than a trophy and a and a, and a medal. Or, no, you're right. You know? It's like With just trophies knowing and all that. that became commercialized now. Became yeah. Money yeah, pitching. Right. You know? That's right. That's right. And that's the way I still believe it. You know, it's like, you know, it was priceless. The my the the history I have and the things I've been through, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Not for the world. You know? It's and good that we're sharing that because people need to hear it. You know, yeah, New York yeah. is just bigger than Brooklyn, bigger than Queens, bigger than Manhattan. New yeah. York is New York. You know, yeah. if you go out of New York and you go to another state, yo, where are you from? You don't say I'm from Queens because you're not in New York. You say I'm from New York. Okay, what part? Rock, yep. Brooklyn, Queen, Manhattan, Long Island, Strong Island, you know what I mean? Or yep. Staten Island. Yep. All New York, New York, you know? And that's yep. why New Yorkers have lost their respect from outsiders because they go outside of New York and they go they go to other states and they ask, yo, so where are you from? Oh, I'm from the Bronx. Really? <laughs> the Bronx? Yeah, you're not from New York. No, I'm from the Bronx. But yep. the Bronx is New York. So they're making themselves look like idiots, bro. Really? Well, it's funny that you bring that up. It's because I live in I live in Pennsylvania right now. And they never they don't they still don't know what breakdancing is. What? <laughs> Pennsylvania, brother. <laughs> Philly does, but not not where I Oh yeah, at. Philly. Oh, North Philly, West Philly. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, they know they know what breaking is, but the part of Pennsylvania I'm in. They never even. They, I play my music, dance to the drummer's beat, and everything. And, and how far are you from Hillsburg? Hillsburg. Oh, I don't know, man. I, I I live in Woolsbury, Pennsylvania, right by the Poconos. You know. Oh wow. Oh, and I play. I play my. I have a truck, and I play my music, bro. They don't even. They they mm -hmm. can't even comprehend the the lyrics of of dance to the drummer's wow. beat or James Brown or stuff that I be pumping on my radio that's um, so was, fun yeah let me ask you a question did you do graph did you write or you just did or you just were a b-boy right i i just with the b-boy I, I i traveled around with the band called the ramones uh back in the day because when uh when i stopped dancing did you get into I, salsa, disco dancing and stuff like that or no yeah, I still went. I still went to clubs. I always went to clubs. I was all in the clubs, you know. So you did get into the hustle and stuff. Oh yeah, okay. I hustled. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. Um, I made a dancing book. I sent Ralph some pictures, so maybe he wants to put it up there. Um, you know, like I said. There were so many different kinds of dances that, and, and in the book, it shows the spank. It shows um, uh, my brother Dennis um, doing some, a helicopter, you know, and that's how, uh, when it first started, that's the first, some of the first moves that were done was a helicopter. And then from there, we, we, we learned about uh, the two steps and then uh, other moves, you know, and most of the moves were on the floor. You know, so, you know, if um, I don't know if Ralph sends you the pictures, but we have we have some pictures in, of the magazine that we made, you know. Uh, the phones. Hello? Yeah. yeah, what's going on? Okay, no, I got interrupted. Oh, I someone tried to call me, me. and oh. it took me out. It you took just me got out. kicked oh. off the room. You see, be back here, T. 
Yeah, but go ahead. Share what you have. Whatever you have, man. It's all valuable information for the culture, man. You know, everybody needs to know the deal. Yeah. Well, the culture is more than just dancing to it. It's graffiti. It's DJs. You know, it's like so much more, you know? Yeah. Uh, clothes. I mean, Adidas and and uh, the outfits that we wore. The, you know, I still, I, I still have 10, I still have 10 pairs of Adidas. And they're all Shit out of here. You serious? I got 10 pair of Adidas, bro. Green, money green. I got yellow. Wow. I got red and blue. And I still keep them fresh using the shaving wow. cream and the toothbrush. Yo, you know, I, I learned how to keep my stuff clean, bro. <laughs> you know, you could wow. you learn that back in the day. Vaseline on the leather. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, wow, you still got that stuff? Yeah, bro. I still take care of my stuff like that. Hmm. You know? That's the stuff they look for in museums, but they look for the original stuff, not the shit that's coming out now in these past yeah. years. They wow. want the original stuff that actually exactly. dance on the floor. They want to put that in cases and glass and put them in museums and then your name yeah. of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, I put I put mine in boxes. After I wear them, I put them in a box. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, you can do a show on that, bro. Just show them what you got. Yeah, yeah. Everybody can watch that. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. It's Ralphie, any point that you want to bring up? Right. No, I mean, I know Ace is trying to bring a, a history of dynamic um, from where it started to where it's at now. Foundation. And there's um, other members that that did great things that he didn't get to meet. And, you know, lately I've been connecting him with certain, certain people, you know, like Dynamic Dolls and, you know, Okay. Oh, like, you know, Rockettes, you had the Dynamic Rockettes, you know, and yeah. then, you know, from Dynamic Rockers, you know, some of the guys we split up and we became Dynamic Breakers and Dynamic Breakers have a record out, you know, they have their own record. So there's things that he didn't even know what dy how Dynamic went from another level. And I had to tell him the truth. I was like, yo, you know me, I'm going to tell you the truth, bro. This is what it is. And look. And I know that he's overwhelmed and so happy to see where Dynamics started and where it is at now and the the stuff they have accomplished because it's not a one-man team, it's a whole crew team, you know? Yep. I was just happy to learn from them and be part of them, even though I was there for a while. But, you know, and I'm still back with Ace and some of the old guys, some have passed away, but... Yeah. You know, I'm I'm always been the humble brother, and I, you know, some people just don't like when you tell the truth because they want to keep all the glory for because themselves. You're pulling their cards, bro. When no, it's not about pulling cards. cards. It's about glory. Like, you know, listen. Like what you say, lion is right. <laughs> some people have a glory of themselves. Like it's all me, 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 me. Okay, yeah. you did something, but you did it with everybody else. It's because right. there's no I in team. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. There's no I in team. No, there isn't. So when you, if I got, if, like now, I'm I'm the president of Dynasty Rockers. I got new members, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not the founder of Dynasty, but I'm the new president of Dynasty for now. And I'm taking Dynasty's name to stay to stay in that level where we at, number one. And, we you know, I got members that I had to train and teach and to keep my crew up. So it's not me, it's we. Because without, yeah. I mean, I could do it by myself if I had to, but I... I have a crew now. So now if I have a crew, now it's we do the things together. Russia, wherever, from wherever, all dynasty from all countries. We all do it together. China, uh, Arizona, everywhere. Spain, mm -hmm. we're all together. You know what I'm saying? And I got Charlie Chilla, who's my youngest, um, youngest crew member. And I'm still working on some other people. Because I'm not mm -hmm. going to stop with just Charlie. I'm, I'm giving some other young brothers out there, or sisters out there, to learn to dance to come part of dynasty because we're a family. Mm. Yeah. Most of the old dynasty doesn't really dance unless if I get Danny Boy, who's maybe the only original dynasty with me, you know, he's he was there in the beginning, but I don't have anybody else. Yeah. He's the only one who goes down and support when I call him. You know? Yeah, I, I noticed that when it comes to this breaking scene, it's segregated, bro. 
And that like breaks my heart, you know, like everybody's not together. Everybody's not supporting each other's events. Feel me? It's about yeah. us. It's about us. It's about us. It's not about us as a culture anymore. It's segregated. Yeah, well, I try, I, I, I try to put the old guys uh, uh, on the map. They're blackballing. They're blackballing certain names, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm not down with that, bro. You feel yeah. me? You can be fly and fresh, but if that's your way and that's the way, if that's your mentality and your way of thought, I ain't messing with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you got to understand. You, you, you have to understand in the, in the, I would say like 85, 86, the mid 80s, when breaking was on his way down, out, because crew members were robbing other crew members, lying to other people. It became so corrupt because of the commercial life. People were cutting each other's throat to getting on TV or make a movie or this and this and that. It it destroyed, it started to destroy the people in the crew. And yeah. then crew started just doing their own thing, looking the for relationship. Agents. They did their own the thing. So in the 90s, when I brought the Dollar Jam back, with a new generation, it brought them all together. But now those generations, if you look at it, don't call and say, you know what? If it wasn't for 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 King Up Rock to make the dollar chance, who knows where we would be at now? Let's yeah. put him involved. What gave, like, what gave you that idea though? Because freestyle music had just took over everything, bro. And then house well, was fighting back. Well, you see, like I said, I was still dancing in, in the block parties. And I was still DJing. That's also so when I would DJ at a party or something like, like I did a I did a wedding last weekend, right? Yeah. And I saw some old school cats, you know, older men. I figure yeah. I know they got they might not up rock, but they got the groove or whatever. They're gonna try to up rock. Yeah. I had to play sex machine. I played it. Half of those guys got down. I got down. They was like, yo, the DJ, you've been <laughs> killing it, you know? Because I was killing it, all, all kind of music, disco, everything, reggae, oh, I played everything. But that's the way I always did party. I did a Sweet 16. I told the Sweet 16 girl, yo, you mind if I get down? She goes, you want to dance? And I'm like, yeah. So I play a, I'll play a break, you know, like a Just Begun or something. And I see guys trying to get down. And then I get down. They be like, oh, man, where you from? I'm from Bushwick. I'm an original rocker, boom, boom, boom. And I, I just, I just smoked the dance floor. I left my trademark right there. Boom. That's one thing they're gonna remember about that party. Yo, the DJ Tony he killed it. He killed the dance floor. <laughs> so <laughs> when I did Dollar Jams, I noticed that there was nothing out for these kids. And I started teaching Supreme Beans, Red, uh, Breaks Crew, Ready to Rock, and all these crew, these kids was coming to my practice. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna start doing a jam. But you know, clubs were. Fifteen twenty dollars. Kids didn't couldn't afford that, so I decided to make it for a dollar. This way, this was before the dollar jam that you were teaching these kids, or after? I was teaching them first, and then the dollar jam came in. But I did wow, say barbers, so breaking I never did... died. Then, huh? No. Breaking never died. Yeah, from ninety six to the ninety three, ninety four, there was no breaking. No, nobody. I mean. Um, I heard Zulu Nation was throwing still jams, but it, it was more rapping. Mm -hmm. It was not, it wasn't like they had a lot of breaking in there. You know, it wasn't like Rocksteady wasn't really doing too much. New York City break. So what year would you much. say that that breaking came back out when you're talking about 90, 91, 92? Because I know in that time, that's when NWA came out and changed the whole world. Yeah. When NWA came out, they changed. They changed the game of rap. They changed the way of thinking. The streets. They changed. Yeah, but everything. I'm talking about. I'm talking about ninety three, ninety four. I started bringing the breaking back. You know, I saw. I I was dancing in a block party, and my son, my older son, he was about nine years old, and his, and the kids in the block was like, "Yo, I didn't know your dad could dance." Oh man! And I I was breaking still. I was still doing windmill yeah. and <laughs> yeah. and they wanted to learn, and then I. Downstairs in my house, I had you know I used to have the basement, and I would give classes, and they would call the the Hank because I lived on Hancock Street, so I called them the Hancock Breakers, and then from there we did a I was doing a a, a magazine, a stress magazine, and Bush yes, and I remember that. And I, I did, that. then that's when I mixed Brace Crew, and then I started teaching Wack and James Forty Nine and those kids. I started mm -hmm. teaching them, so that's how, for me. I, once I got the kids, I had to make an event for them to break so they can win a trophy or something. And that 
that's when, uh, like a year later, Crazy Lay came to a loft that I did a party. And he was like, yo, this breaking again? And I'm like, yeah, I've been teaching, whatever. And then he started to teach at the point in the Bronx. But London from New York City Breakers, he came and he started doing Battle of the Borough. I got pictures and videos, so they know, they know what I'm telling is the truth. Mm -hmm. But I'm not trying to say that, I'm not trying to take all the credit, but there was nobody else doing it but me. I was the one who decided to want to teach. And I was teaching for free. Because yep. I didn't learn. I, I had to learn by watching. Nobody taught me. Yeah. You know? So when I learned, when I started doing these jams, I started looking for old school dudes and then started bringing them. I even bought Spider. I bought Richie Rock, who came to my one of my events with Charlie Up Rock. We did an event together. And I bought all these people from Coney Island and everywhere. And Chiba Rock was also part of Dynamic one time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And nobody gets Chiba Rock that respect. I do. Me, Ace does. He yeah. knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why we try to we try to recognize the pioneers because the, these guys are old now, you know. Uh, Nelly, now we just lost Nelly. Now he was like, uh, he meant a lot to a lot of people, you know. And uh, God bless his soul, you know. And uh, I wish he would have got recognized, you know, in in a way. I gave a, um, I made some awards for some of the pioneers, you know, and. Um, and it was good. It was good that they, you know, they got them, you know, after all these years, you know. And uh, I wish it was sooner, but you know, a lot of a lot of things happened, you know, in those days, you know. But you yeah. Know. But we kissed. It's still alive today, you know. And it's you know, it's funny because, um, seeing that it traveled all over the world. You know, and um, something that came from the streets of New York City. That's right. New York you know? City. That's and it. New York. You, got, you see some of the moves that these kids are doing all over the world. They're crazy. You know, I mean. It, it, it's like Lord Jamar said. I got to agree with him. Lord Jamar yeah. said on one of his broadcasts, it did not start in no other city. It did not start down south. That movement with the graffiti and. And, and, and breaking and up rocking, you know, and emceeing and DJing. That was yeah. not going on. All those yeah. things at one time in some other city or some other country worldwide, it wasn't. That's a New York thing. Yep, absolutely. So what they were using music from another city, another state. Yeah. But they wasn't doing that in that state at that time. You understand? Mm -hmm. Niggas was gangbanging. Niggas was on some other stuff. Cats. You know, I don't want to use that word. You feel me? Yep. So... That is a New York thing. Yeah. And it absolutely. evolved worldwide. Everybody took their talents and their stuff, what they saw, and they're calling it hip hop too. So now hip hop is worldwide, but the foundation, it cannot be taken away from New York. Now, whether it's Brooklyn or the Bronx, that's your debate. Yeah. Only New Yorkers could debate that that were there, not that heard this, that, and the fifth. Only those that were there can talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why we bring you guys to the panel. Yeah. Yeah. Feel me? You're from yeah. New York. New York yeah. born. Yeah. Feel me? We're part of the hip hop, but we're not. We're not from the start to start. And we wasn't born in New York. Yeah. Feel me? Yeah. But we respect it because we became it too. And we're carrying it on. I'm 60 years old. Look at me, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I don't change, bro. Maybe when I go out there suit and tie and everything, but they still know Marcos hip hop. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's because swears my identity. I love the culture, bro, and I love everybody who contributes to it. I don't like what's foul about it. You know what I mean? That oh, I did this first, you weren't there, and cats are making up lies and stuff. You know, but yeah. what's the proof is receipts. Do you yeah. got pictures? Do you got flyers? Do you got co-signers that were there that saw you? That's what counts in this game, bro. Well, and that's what it's coming down to. Back in my day, they only had Polaroid cameras. And if you know anything about yep. Polaroid, they, they don't <laughs> last long. <laughs> well, I was one of those dudes on 42nd Street that when you came out there and you came from one of the clubs, Latin Quarters or whatever, Roseland, yeah. and you passed through. I was right next to Blimpies. I was that dude with the camera, with the homeboy, yo, two for five or one for seven. That. that was me. That. You take a picture, you click. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was there. I was in the 80s. Yeah. Late 80s. Yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? And those so, let me tell you something. When you think about it, that the 80s was the bomb. I'm yeah, sorry. bro. Yes. And then the freestyle music came in effect, every, bro. Yo, every, every I still go to clubs now and the music I play in my truck is all that. And Whenever I play my music, it takes me back to different parts of the clubs that I remember when the music was playing there, what club I was at. I mean, you, my memory is like when, when it comes to a, a song and a club where I where I heard that song at and, and where I danced at, I remember what time. So I assume yeah. you went to Speaks. Uh-huh. You went to Speaks in no, Long I Island? Went to, I, went to, yeah, I went to some crazy clubs, Plato Retreat. I went to Hellfire. I went to Levels. I went to Danceteria. I went to the clubs that they didn't even te- they didn't even they didn't even have a name for some of these clubs. You know, they're un- totally underground. So you were a club head. You were a yeah. club head. Oh, man. Let me tell you something. Breaking took me to a lot of places, bro. Took me to meet a lot of people. You know. Did you get to travel outside of New York or no? No, I well, I went to Mexico once, but I got robbed in Mexico, so I never went back. Yeah, mm-hmm. how was that? They, you know, I didn't know that you can't, you can't, you got to stay on the resort area. I went, and, uh, I went to a bar, and I started dancing there, and then I walked this chick home on the beach, and this guy dressed up as a cop, pulled a gun to my head, and then he wanted the jewelry and money, everything. I lost all my shit in Mexico. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was just one guy or, or like a bunch of them? One guy with a big gun. <laughs> it was like a 45. They put you that see, that's why now when you go to places, you got to check in with someone you know. Then, and then, you know, when you get to that city or that country, nobody's yeah. going to touch you because you already got connected with someone, you know? Because that's how it is. Once you're connected, when them thieves know that you're connected with somebody there, then they, ah, no se le puede tocar a él because now we're going to have yeah. to that group. You know I'm what I mean? I'm going to DR next month, bro. So you know, Where? like I'm connected Rico? already, huh? Where are you going? Dominican Republic. Oh, DR. Okay, I thought you said PR. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm 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 going to a place where I never went and that I would love to be. You know. Are you so, gonna see Charlie Rock over there? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to see <laughs> who I can hook up with down there because you know. Salute to him, brother. man. He comes in the room with us sometimes. Kicks it yeah. with us. Yo, that'd be yeah, great to hook up with him down, down in, in DR. That'd be an experience. And I know he knows the best clubs to go to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, nice. definitely, you definitely gotta hook me up with him and, and let me let him know I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll get we'll we'll get you we'll get you with him. Ice, yeah. you got any questions? Ice, ice, ice pick. Ice. Um, What's up? How many how many family members are left from from your from your crew. Oh, dynamic. Yeah. Uh, I got my brother, Eddie Ed, and uh, that's it. Me, Eddie Ed, and my brother, and B Boy. B Boy still around. That's only four. Uh, only like two of us that are still. Wow. Around. Yeah, but you got to remember, most of these guys, they. they you know, and this is the shame of it, is that um, you know, we didn't get fam- we didn't get famous like the guys now and the guys today, but we paved the wor- we paved the way. You understand yeah. me? So, you opened the doors. Yeah, and a lot of people don't recognize them. that. A lot of people think that that uh, just because you didn't make some uh, moves and everything that you're not a part of history, and that's that's a lie. No, 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 no. You know. Because, yeah. uh, but they, you know, I know in my heart, you know, I'm part of history, and that's all that matters, you know. Oh, with everything you just told us, of course, we can see that automatically. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, you know. Yeah. I just love, I just love being a b boy. You know, I got, I got b boy tattooed on my hand, on my arm, and people ask me, "What's a b boy? What's a b boy?" And I explain to them what a b boy is, you know. I'm from New York, and I and I'm a dancer, and a b boy is break dancing. 
You know, mm -hmm. that's what a b-boy is. It has certain terminology. You said once that was a stick of cake, but that's a Bronx thing, you know what I mean? It has yep. different terminology, but different people call it different heads, you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. It is a break boy, it's a b-boy. I believe yep. that. You know, yep. One break dances, get a hardcore, got the style, the fashion, and does yep. everything else in hip-hop. To me, that's a b -boy. Yeah, one who just did it all, bro. You no, know? accepted it all and did it all. Feel me? If you yep. didn't do it all, you still accepted it all. Feel yep. me? Yeah, you a know, a, a b boy could go anywhere, talk to anybody, and still be himself. Stand you out. Know? Not stand out among us. Not change for nobody. Yeah. You me? Yep. Back. Straight up, Back. Shooter, brother. Straight up. You know, and that's the way I've been mm -hmm. all my life. You know, and I'm very proud. You know, being a b boy uh, changed my life. It, it saved my life, and it is my life. You know, and that's all. That's all I could say. So basically, you know? you're still in the scene, right? You're still in today's scene, right? Um, are you judging? Any? Are you judging? Because you should be a judge with I, all the battles you, know you had and you know all the experiences you have. You should be a judge. Yeah, you know, it's like. I, I I try. I'm trying to get back into the scene. I was in the scene, uh, you know. After I after after 40 years, you know, it's like uh, wow. the experience I had. I didn't I didn't talk about it too much because I don't like uh, um, on one to one level. I'll, I'll I'll give you the scoop, you know. But there was a lot of betrayed stuff that happened to Dynamic Rockers, and there was a lot of a lot of a lot of lies and a lot of things that would betrayal, that would, like in a lot yeah. of other groups too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I still, you know, to this day, it's like my brother, my brother uh, Dennis from from Florida. You know, he has really bad feelings about, uh, you know, one of the members of Dynamic Crocus who's um trying to take everything away from the pioneers. You know, and not even looking out for the pioneers. You know, so. That's not cool. No, exactly. You know, and it's a, it, you know, it's like like there's like uh, King Arthur said, there's uh, there's everybody in the team. Nobody, there's no, there's no one person in in one team. Yep. You know, it does. Sweet. But, but you know, me. you know what's funny is that um, it was told um a lie about how Dynamic Rockets got their name, and just uh, recently, when I found that out, I stepped to that person and I said, "You came up with the name," and I and I made him swallow the words he said, because I know how the name came and I mm -hmm. and, and how the drawing of the shirt was because I was there doing it on a book, you know what I'm wow. saying? And I never told anybody about getting it from Batman and Robin. I kept that to myself. And now the truth is being told. Yeah, you know? Dynamic Dolls. <laughs> dynamic uh, dolls. Yeah. Dynamic yeah. Dolls were part of you too? Those were your girls? Huh? Dynamic Dolls were your girls? No, we had Dynamic Rockettes. If dynamic you know, Rockettes? Yep. And if you look at, if you ask King Up Rock to send you the picture, You'll see Alan from the Hatton Boys in the magazine, and you'll see Gina. She was a dynamic rocket. Oh, and wow. Then, yeah, we had girls dancing, too. We had girls dancing and everything. Gina, there was a couple other girls, uh, Barbara, you know? But this is when, like, Breaking First came out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, like, it was all new, you know? And uh, it was great. It was great being 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and meeting meet, meeting people from different boroughs and hanging out with them after you dance with them, hang out with them. Sometimes you will fight with them, and then after you fight, you still you still hook up later in another place, another time, and, and you you give each other respect. You know, and, yeah, and yeah. That, that's what it was all about. You know, it was like mm -hmm. respecting the, it was respecting the skills. That's what it's all about. Respecting the skills. You know? Yeah. Did you ever see anybody get shot or killed out of B-Boy Jam? Uh, yeah. yeah. I oh, seen, you did? Yeah, yeah. I've seen guys get hurt. Really. I've seen guys get hurt. I went to a couple uh, I went to a couple places where 
you know, a guy got stabbed. Um, a couple guys got beat down, you know. I got beat mm-hmm. down, you know. Um, and you know, it, it, back in the in in that in my era, it was it was rough. It was yeah. rough to be a b boy, you know. Now it's like when I came back into the scene and I started seeing them uh, shake hands. I was like, holy shit, you know? They shake hands now. Back in my mm-hmm. days. We didn't shake no hand, you know? It's like, yo, we were ready to throw it down, you know? And, yeah. Um, but now it's it's changed so much. Breakdancing came so far, and I'm just so glad that I was a part of it, you know? I mean, I could say that I'm a part of it because it's in my heart. It's in my soul, you know? And uh, and it, it, it gave these kids from the street a way out. You know, instead of going mm-hmm. to join joining a gang and killing somebody and going to jail for the rest of your life, then dancing with them on a dance floor and and having a good time doing it. You know, it's like and you don't end up in jail. You don't end up dead. You know what I'm saying? It was it yeah, was Yeah, it gave them a voice and an identity, you know. Yeah. So they yeah, could be heard. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, another question. I got a question for you. Did you teach anyone? And who taught you? Um, I taught a couple guys, um, but they forgot who it was uh, that taught that gave them some advice because um, I give a lot of a lot of guys advice on on some moves, and um, and those moves became famous. Okay. And so it's like I don't want to mention their names because uh, they don't remember. You know, because you we sold the, them. Moves, the moves that you did, more or less. Well, I, like I said, there was a helicopter. Like back in my days, it was the beginning of all the moves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, it was. It wasn't to where, where um, we put names on them. We just went to clubs. Like when I danced, when I danced at the Fun House, you know, and and I did some moves out there. Um. It was like nobody, uh, they didn't want us dancing in clubs. You understand me? So yeah. when you did a, a move on the dance floor and, and people will watch you, security will come and throw you the hell out of the club. You know, yeah. that's how it was back in my day. But, um, you know, I, I look at all these kids dancing now and I think about their moves they made. And what's crazy about it is that I could picture that move that they made in my head and know that I would have done something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I would have thought thought about that move, you know? And that comes with, that comes within, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you always, you always have that, that thought in your head is that uh, if I see you do one move, I'm going to make a different move and it's going to smoke your move, you know? Yeah. So, and that's how that's how the battle is on now. You know, it's still like that. You know, I see these kids. I mean, it's amazing when I look at the the um, Facebook and I see these kids all over the world doing these moves with their head and their shoulders and their their body. It's like it's incredible. It's incredible, and nobody could take like like you said, nobody could take it away from New York because that's where it all started. You know, yep. it started yeah. all in New York. And I don't care if you're from China, Russia, Germany, wherever you're from, it started in New York, baby. Yes. Yes. You know? I've argued that with a lot of heads, man, but you know, I know I'm right when it comes yep. to that. You yes, know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, trying to say it started in North Carolina. Why? Because the music that they were using in New York came from down there. Okay, that's a good point. But were they doing Rocking and people in North Carolina at that time. No. I know. See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. New York took a little bit of everything from everybody. It created its own image and thing, and it became hip hop. You it's understand? All about the coach. It's all about the coaches. The graffiti. It's the graffiti. Like I said, it's the graffiti. It's the, the, the DJs. It's yeah, and even though that word, that terminology, hip hop, was used in the 1930s or 1920s by 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 certain um, 
black folks that were doing it, you know, that were doing it on the mic. It's cool. Yeah. Okay, we understand that. But who put it into perspective <laughs> made, and made it into something bigger? New York. Yeah. And you got to give the credibility to Africa Bambada no matter what. Let's forget about whatever they're saying about him, but let's just think about what he did in the hip-hop world as far yeah. as the talent is concerned and get everybody to be recognized and have a voice. He put those elements together and named it. Yeah. That comes yeah. from the mighty Zulu nation, bro. Yeah. You just think, about, think, think about the... They take yeah. that credit and say they started hip-hop because they're 65, 67 years old. No, man, you're part of it, but you did not bring it together, make it recognized, and give it an identity and a name. That you comes from Bam Bottom, man. You are a part of it. That's yeah, you are you a part of it. Part of it. it. But you did not gone, brother. create it. Everybody, everybody that has hip-hop gave a little part of themselves to it, you know? And that's yep. what I And did. Bam saw that. And then yep. he said, oh, wait a minute. We got something here. Then he said, I'm going to take this, this, yep. and this, that. We're all doing in the street. Everybody's doing their own thing, but I'm gonna make it all one thing together. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And, that, and he called and it hip hop, and he gave it yeah. the elements. Element each category, its name, bro. DJ, break dancing, graffiti. You know, even though they all had its own culture. Yeah, graffiti had nothing to do with hip hop in the beginning. Uh, had nothing to do with That's b boys. Right. They rock and roll. They, everybody was doing their own thing. Every everything was yeah. its own culture, just like the rock yeah. dance was its own culture. But who brought it all together made one out of it is Bamba. You got to yeah, give it up but, to you. But you got to realize, you got to realize this too. It's like every culture that was formed in that time, graffiti, rapping, um, DJs, they all had their own battles with every every different kinds of crews. Like other DJs yeah. battled different yeah. DJs. I've been to jams where two DJs battled each other. Yeah, it's on movement. It's on movement. Let me tell you something. Even rapids, rapids will get rapid, rapids will rap against each other. You know, I mean, all these battles that they had, and and it was all a part of the culture. You know, and it and that's the way it was. You know, it's amazing. The part that I'm not, the part that I'm having a difficult problem with is that they're saying that the rock dance is not hip hop. How could anyone even think of that? Yeah. And then again, who started the up rock movement? Yeah, was it the blacks? Was it the whites? Was I don't know the why they. I don't know why they're trying to stop it. I don't need you know. It's stupid. That you know, was the first like, dance the hip hopper did. Was he up rock yeah. first? You know, he got yeah. into the rock dance, the outlaw. From there, it evolved into something else, like yeah. freestyle. Involved no, like disco music. Yeah. That you did the hustle with the female, with that kind of music, with the high notes, with the females and the guys singing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. getting with one another evolved into freestyle. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Freestyle absolutely. evolved into house. Yeah. House evolved into electronic music. Yeah. From there it became rape. Yeah. You know, and then trip hop. Come on, bro. Jungle. Oh, I mean, come on, man. We all have to see where the what was done first. I I think and I think if you look at that, I, I look up about it, is that you know, it's a revolving um, cycle in life. You know, it's like if you think about some of the you, if you think about some of the dances in the twenties and the thirties, like Fred Astaire, you yeah, know, and, and other dances. I mean, they done some moves of break dancing. If you study your history and and you go back to watch these old flicks, you could see people dancing breaking. I I mean, it, it, it's not like a battle, but you see them making a moves that only a break dancer would would have. Let me ask you a question because you're from New York. Do yeah. you recall any outlaws and the outlaw, you know, gangs and the outlaw yeah. club? Do you recall much. them? Did you recall them DJing? Were they DJs too? No, no. They're they the dirty ones, ball busters, crazy homicides. I know. All no, but I'm saying, did you ever see them with a DJ? Did they get it? Did they get into DJing and stuff like that or no? No. I never seen any any crew any uh ball, uh outlaw crew that that DJ. No, I never been to a outlaw crew party. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm the sure. these outlaw members got tired of killing each other, got tired of everything that was going on back and forth because it was a way of life. They had no choices, right? right. They got tired of doing that, and they started getting into the b boying, you know, the break dancing, 
the, yeah. the, the well, they were automatically writing their names. The gangs were writing their names all over the place. So that automatically they had graffiti down back. But yeah. what I'm saying is if they got into DJing and break dancing and even rapping, then that would make it that the foundation of hip hop comes from the outlaws, bro. Yeah. Well, there was. Because there the was, outlaws there gave was. it up and started becoming something else. But yeah, it still came exactly. from the street, the black and Puerto Ricans of New York. You understand? Yeah, exactly. Because there was there was a come there was some ball busters that danced. I mean, I know there was ball busters that danced. You know, I'm sure they had ball buster DJs too. Because you know, a crew a, a crew always had everything. FBA was ball busters, wasn't it? FBA, yeah, the graffiti crew. Yep, there was a lot of them. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Wow. But um, ice. It's been Ice a great. What do you What do you got to say, Ice? Oh, so much history! I've learned so much. Yeah. Oh. That's cool. That's cool. It's, it's, you know, I'm so glad I got on with you guys today because I don't normally um, go on anything because um, I ke I keep a lot of stuff to myself. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I don't want to get involved in he say she say stuff. You know what I'm saying? I know what coach I know what the coach is about and I lived it, you know? No, and, this is your history, what you went through, what you witnessed growing up. Yep. Yep. Everybody has a start a different story to tell. Like there was no way in the world you could be in Queens on a Friday night at eight o'clock and be in the Bronx at the same time. There's two different cities going doing different things, bro. Yeah. So how can you claim what the other city was doing? You yeah. couldn't be there at the same time, bro. Yeah. So you could only claim what you saw in your zone, what you witnessed growing up. Yeah. I can't I've take been... it away from somebody else. What they're saying over there, that's on them. But how are they going to speak on you? Oh, but we went out there. We ain't saw nobody DJ, nobody rapping, nobody break dance. Oh, really? Let me tell you I'm something. Sure about there's, that. there's so many clubs. We were so big. Yeah. There's, you know? so, there's, so, there's so many clubs in Brooklyn that, that I went and danced at. And uh, battle with different guys, and some of them, some of them, some of the guys didn't belong to a crew. They just knew how to dance, you know. And it felt good to go to a club and see somebody get down and and then get down on them, you know. And and after after dancing and and yeah, I'm gonna have to say that from yeah. witnessing from different cities and different yeah. states because I've always met I've always met cats from everywhere. Yep. And I was talking, so how was it back in the late 70s and the 80s? How was it over there? And they, I've never heard nothing yep. the way it was in New York. Never. With a thousand battles, a thousand crews, and yep. everybody taking that real serious and going out there and representing it. That's only New York, man. Yeah, absolutely. Probably a handful in Connecticut, a handful in Massachusetts, a handful in Boston, Philly. And not to take away from nothing from nobody. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah, and we're absolutely. talking about the start. We're not talking about the middle now, because now it's bigger than ever. But yeah. we're talking about the start. We're just a handful of here, 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 and it wasn't taken that serious. It was just something to do. It wasn't right. like New York when you cats took this shit to heart, bro. Yeah, you killed for it. <laughs> it wasn't like that at Harvard. You lost a battle. You lost a battle. See ya. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't want to be ya. But it yeah. wasn't like the way I'm. I thought I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna murk you ass because you took me out in front yeah. of all these females. Nah, man. But that's how it was in New York. Yeah, how that's what makes New York stand Absolutely. out. And New York was just different, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely, because you know, back in the day, it's like we didn't have video cameras. We didn't have um, uh, people taking pictures of us. You know what I'm saying? Now, today, it's like you, everybody's. No, believe it or not, that always existed. It just wasn't given to the minority, but they yeah. had it. Trust me. Yeah. They had it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Yep. High places had it. That that's how they were able to record these battles in clubs and clubs. They yeah. had it. They just we didn't have it. Yeah. You understand? Minorities yeah. didn't have it. But it was out there. Rich people had it, bro. They had cameras. I, they had it. I remember we battled uh some guys at the Roxy's. There was a couple uh um rock steady guys. There was, you know, guys from different crews at the club. You know, because mm -hmm. Rock Rocksteady was a crew where um a, a place where if you were a B boy you went there. You definitely went to uh, Rocksteady or or ten eighteen. They were both two names. Um mm -hmm. but if you were a B boy and you went there, 
you had all the girls on your dick. There was no, wow. problem, no doubt about it. It's like the girls that went to the club went there because the B-boys, you know? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was it was great, man. I, I love my life, you know? It's like I wouldn't change a minute of it, you know what I'm saying? It's like... There was so much, so much joy and happiness. And, you know, I could sit home at, I could sit home and like share and talk to you guys right now. And, and I could, I could feel my hairs going up in my skin, you know, <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's bringing back times that I had so bringing much. Bringing back time. that love, man. Bringing back yeah. love. That's what yeah. it is. Our love, Absolutely. man. Bringing it back. Absolutely, absolutely. No negativity and, and you, at all. And you guys ever, you guys are much as, as family as as I am. You know what I'm saying? It's like you guys live. Thank you, likewise, man. Ralph, you've been trying to get us to interview you for the longest, man. But yeah, we've been having yeah. differences. He had a situation. I had a situation yeah. in Peru. You know, well, we all been caught up and all that. You know, I'm glad. But now everything is getting back to normal again. You know. Yeah, I'm glad you guys put me on to to, to this because. You know, a lot hasn't been said about the early guys of Dynamic Rockers. And, you know, it feels like they, they've been pushed out of history. And, and they shouldn't be, you know, because they're the founders of Dynamic Rockers. And, and they paved the way, you know. And I'm No, but this is a good thing, too, because, you know, the world wants to know who was there in the beginning. Because they feel like they're empty not knowing the history of what they follow. And this is in the Latin community, especially Peru, Colombia, uh, Brazil. You know what I mean? These these are countries, yeah. Chile, Ecuador. They all want to know about this hip hop. How did it start? Who was there? What crews? What were the names? There had to be more than just three crew names that right. are known worldwide. They had yes, there's hundreds. Yeah, yes, there were. And this gives you a chance. This interview now gives you a chance to have your own protocol show. You now you can make your own show and you could interview B Boy. That were there in your time that you know oh, that will co sign what you're saying. Yeah. So this gives you a it. voice now, and now you can start your own movement because yeah, you're a B boy yeah. that was there. Yeah, absolutely. And believe me, absolutely. You'll, do good, you'll do good in it. I see you will do very good in it because you're a B boy yeah. from Queens. You were there in the start. You're the founder of uh, Dynamic Breakers. Wow. Because yeah. Dynamic Breakers, we, it, yo, we heard about it, but not as much. That was swept under the rug. Because yeah. you guys had them power moves. You guys were the ones yeah. who really got into that and started that. Well, Dynamic Rock is, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're the, that the, the, you know. The Dynamite. Been, it, it was that down. name. It was the Dynamite. It was yeah. that name. Dynamic. Yeah. It was that yeah. name. Yeah. The moves you guys did was incredible. You know who I heard a lot about you from, too, was uh, my brother Jamar, because he's a B-boy from the old school, from the early 80s. And yeah. he knew he got to know Ozrock. Okay. He got to know Kid Freeze. He got to know certain b-boys, and they let him know the history of New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. they were there. And there's it's a lot right. of stuff that's not being told. I you took know? Kid. I took Kid Freeze to the club. He was 11 years old. I took him wow. to his first club, and I remember him coming to the club with a hockey helmet. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, da we danced against. <laughs> We danced against Crash, Allen, and Bingo. And he came to the club with a hockey helmet. We call him Snoopy. And he did he he started spinning on his hockey helmet. You know, it's like that kid was ready to ready to, to be kid freeze doing his moves, you know? And it and it shows, you know, it, at an early age, bro, if it's in your blood, it's in your blood. You know what I'm saying? If you if you are a part of it, you you definitely are a part of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. I agree with that. So, what you got any kind of flyers or anything you want to show us on pictures? I mean, now is the time, or you want to save that for your when you do no, your thing? No, I I send I send um I send Ralph pictures. So Ralph has the the. Where did he go? He I don't know where Ralph went, but if you look at the if you look at the pictures. In the magazine, you'll see my brother Dennis doing um, a helicopter. Okay, now, that that was the beginning of Dynamic Rockets. See, we got picked from from the magazine in in a club called One of a Kind. You know, that's where Dynamic Rocket first started. And yeah. 
They didn't let us wear our shirts for a magazine because of a couple things. We had a Playboy bunny, so they didn't want that to be shown on, on in the book. Explicit. You know? Yeah. yeah. So and they wouldn't let us uh wear our shirts because you know people, you know, like magazines and films, you know, they basically used us, you know, to make money and then dump mm -hmm. us. You know what I'm saying? And that's vulture that's vultures, true. like they you say. Know? Vulture yeah. vultures. That's right. That they that's what they did back in the eight, you know, eighties, is that they just used a bunch of guys uh for different movies and 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 just make a movie and then not even care about the culture that followed it, you know? And and they made the millions, man. They made the millions. Yes, they did. Yes, they did, brother. Yeah, but get the pictures from from King Up Rock and, and you guys will love it. You guys definitely Oh yeah, it. we're definitely gonna show it. All That'll right. be another show. That'll be another broadcast. Oh yeah. The Sounds continuation. Good, you know, so you'll explain to us every picture or yes, every I will. slide. I will. I just don't know how to see. Show. I don't know how to um to send it to you guys now because I do have the magazine, um, but I wouldn't know how. To, uh, because how to we're not friends it. yet. But um, since you send it to Ralphie, we'll get to it. Okay. We'll just do part two of this. We'll do a part two now. We'll do a part two. Sounds you know? good, brother. So people get to, people can get to know you more, and then you can start your own YouTube channel, bro. Because Sounds you got to get something out of this. You put in all those years for what? For nothing? Yeah. yeah. If there's a way for you to get money off this, why not? Well, everybody's yeah. doing it. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what? Know. It's in my heart, brother. You know? Yeah, it's see? Priceless. I'm pretty sure you will have a lot of followers that are going to support you. Everybody you know in Queens automatically is going to be one of your oh, supporters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So I think you'll be good, man. All so, right, we'll, okay, we want to end this out with shout outs. You want to give anybody a shout out? Anybody get, credit that you know right now is the time. Give the names out on this platform. Well, I would like I would like to shout out to some of the pioneers, like uh, you know, Nelly Nell, God bless his soul. You know, he 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 was a big part of Dynamic Rockers and and my brother Dennis G, who was in in Florida that never got recognized. You know, um, you know, much love for all of them, and I just got to say much love to all the. All the new cats that are, are, are holding dynamic rockers um, to the fullest right now and, and still carrying the name on. I give much respect to Glide and his son who um, are still carrying dynamic rockers' name. And, and, and much love for all the people that are dynamic rockers and that were dynamic rockers that didn't get recognized. You know what I'm saying? To all the guys that didn't get recognized, much respect and much love. You know, and that's what mm -hmm. I do. That's all I have to say, brother. Any female names? Any female names you want to shout out that uh, haven't been recognized yet? That well, were there? Gina, the, all the dynamic rockets to all the dynamic rockets that came from one of a kind. If you hear this and you see this, much love. ACA is still alive. And that's great. All right, all brother. Right, cool. All right. All right, it was All right, nice meeting you. You too, you too, guys. Much respect, much love. It's you just ever, the beginning. If you ever call me, please don't hesitate. All we right? got you. We got you. Big up to All Brown. Right. Okay. All right. God bless. Bye bye. Okay. All right. Um. I. I don't know how to shut it off. Let me see. No, you just click the off button. How do you feel about this interview? Did you enjoy it? Did you yeah, learn I, 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 I don't know much history about um, up rocking, so it makes it hard for me. So, but uh, listen to what the founder who started it and everything that he said was just mind blowing. The founder of this group, not the founder of Breakdance. Founder of his crew, his section, his, no, area. his crew, his crew. Yeah, yes, that was incredible. And it's a white person as well, and yeah. his brother. <laughs> yeah, you know, like that's hip -hop incredible. Is universal, bro. That, hip -hop that's amazing. Is universal. Yeah, yeah hip -hop is universal. That's for sure. That's definitely. It's not just There's a lot of untold stories out there, bro, and untold truth. You know, and it. It's sad how certain individuals. 
want to be the only ones identified who did something. You understand? It's sad because a lot of us play a major role in this. It didn't matter whether we're from New York, but we played a we we helped to keep it alive. You understand? By us doing it in different cities, it 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 kept it alive, bro. Feel me? It got bigger than what it was. It got bigger than just New York. It moved on worldwide, you know. But of course, through New York, we're not gonna take that away from them. You know what I mean? So, it, New York would be better if everybody would just come together and become one. Here, you know, because this segregation, separation, man, is it, it, it's, it's, it's gonna de destroy everything, bro. You know, it's gonna destroy everything. That's what it's gonna do. Everybody disagreeing. No, I did this, and you know, like it's just gonna destroy everything. Bro. Nobody wants to be a part of chaos. You know. Nobody. True. But this is some valuable information, and there's so many other crews. We, we got to get a hold of Flex. Flex has been hitting me up. He's ready to be next online. Let's do Flex. You want to try him? Let's hit him up. Yeah, why not? Yeah? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Why not, bro? <laughs> I don't teach today, so I'm free, you know. You want to hang up? I, I can still last. All right, get him on. Does he know how to do the live screen? Screen? I, I, I had basically told him. I told him how to do it. I sent him the link. All right, we got to – one of us hang up and talk. Let me hang up and talk to him. You stay on. I, I'll be right back. You could do whatever you want. Keep people entertained. No, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll just end it and just make a new one. Okay. So, but we have to let him know because he's been hitting me up left and right. So, you want to hang up? up? Okay, yeah, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to talk to him right quick. Okay. Well, there you have it the history. The history. That's what it's all about.